Well, this is my chicken's morning snack, and in here is zucchini and squash, oats and quinoa, and fresh pulp from our carrot juice that we are drinking this morning for breakfast. <laughs> they usually get some yogurt for their digestion, but they're out of yogurt this morning. And they get their melon, see the watermelon or cantaloupe. So I'm going to go in and give my girls, I have seven chicks, a rooster, <laughs> who you can hear very well. So I'm going to go in their coop and give them their breakfast. This is my Australorp Aussie. She's head hen. That means she gets to eat first. At Carla Jean Oldenkamp's Zen Hen House and Garden, everybody gets organically grown food. Daughter Nicole Binnaker and her son Dane love the fresh picks to take home. Dane collects eggs with Carla's husband Dale from chickens that will never be fried. It all started in spring 2010 when Carla wanted to grow food that she controlled. Dale removed cedar trees, leveled the land, and built the raised beds for Carla's square foot gardens. So the uh, construction of the boxes are uh, 2 by 12 cedars um, and simply 4 foot squares. So very easy to um, calculate your lumber cost. You buy 8 foot lumber and you get two sides. So basically two 8 foot uh, pieces of uh, cedar lumber will make a one box. Uh, screwed together with a, a frame in the corner, and then placed them and leveled them. Carla filled them with good soil and started planting. Her robust plants testify to their organic regimen that relies on nutritious soil and fertilizers that promote its microbial activity. One thing that stuck when I've been learning about gardening is you're not feeding the plants, you're feeding the soil. So that's very important when I'm fertilizing or whatnot, that I'm getting the soil and not the plant, because that's where the plant grows from. Since the garden feeds the spirit too, Carla nourished its style. Dale formalized its status as a destination and to keep out unwelcome diners. Flowers heighten Carla's scheme, but their main job is to attract vegetable pollinators. In bloom, culinary herbs entice pollinators, while their fragrant leaves repel some garden pests. Companion planting and well-drained soil are the secret to Carla's strawberries. This is my strawberry patch that we planted um, in the spring and have had success of it not uh, burning up or rotting because this little trellis device was created with some leftover materials from the coop and I put, put shade cloth on here and it, it did shade well and uh, I also at one point had cantaloupe growing on here so that their leaves helped shade it. So when the cantaloupe was harvested then I just put shade cloth on it. But hopefully and um, I'll just put something over to protect it in the winter and we'll have a nice big strawberry patch next spring. Have some fresh strawberries. These are little baby runners that you can just cut off and put back into the soil. Planting the garden meant factoring in water. I've heard a lot of people who've given up on their gardens this past year because of the heat and because of the irrigation system, I think, and the soil um, composition, it's, it's helped the, gar the garden grow. Dale rented a trencher to install pipes on timed irrigation to each bed. All the PVC pipe is run underground to the center of each box and then I had a riser pipe that comes up in the middle of each box. And originally we, they came up about a foot with a sprinkler head, but again we, we were able to just cut those off at ground level and apply the um, uh, drip system directly right over top of what I had already done the first time, so it was very minimal. It's very low water consumption because the drip system applies the water directly to the soil, so we don't have to worry about uh, wasting water through evaporation. Carla also wanted eggs produced by chickens raised in humane conditions. They did a lot of research before Dale built the chicken run and coop. Number one, uh, predator proof. We um, had heard so many horror stories about animals digging underneath and getting chickens. And space, I wanted them to have plenty of room to run around in their run. They're birds, so just like in any bird cage, you know, people have toys and little exercise things for their birds and it's the same with chickens. They enjoy getting on the roost and flying around and just having different places to perch because they have birds and they like to perch. And they like to go underneath the, um, 
the coop, which I wanted also above ground so that they could get out of heat or that's where they like to go in the day and just sleep. Dale's sprinkler system also cools them down in summer. Insulation keeps them warm in winter. With the automatic door, um, it's very easy to go in and control that door. So it's set, it's set to open at 7.30 in the morning and 7 it closes at 7.30 at night right now. But it's very easy to just walk over with a magnet and you touch it and the door will close. So we could easily, if it's cold out, we could just manually close the door uh, and it will continue its timer cycle for the next day. So it's very, very low maintenance mm -hmm. to, to make sure your chickens are secure. A video camera lets them monitor what's going on even when they're away. One of the challenges is a lot of chicken owners uh, find themselves kind of married to their chickens. They never get to go anywhere. They have to find chicken sitters to take care of them, to let them in and let them out. So the combination of the automatic door and the automated misting systems this summer and the camera uh, give us peace of mind that we can we were we able to we don't go have somewhere. to be here every day. Yeah. Although we did have a chicken sitter, my best friend. She came out and every morning gave them their treats and took care of them. Carla and Dale also designed an easy way to clean out the coop to dump into a wheelbarrow for the compost pile. Carla took it in stride when one chick turned out to be a rooster, Hawkeye. A rooster is good to have because he protects the flock um, from predators. He also intervenes when they're bickering and pecking on one another, and he finds food for them. You like Hawkeye? What does he say? Okay, somebody just laid an egg. It's hysterical. The first time the first egg was laid, all of them started doing that. It was like a hallelujah chorus. They all went off. <laughs> so that's the rooster announcing that an egg has been laid. Isn't that wild? It's also party time when Carla lets everyone out for a run. They can scratch for bugs in here. When the compost uh, bin is creating worms, then I'll pull out like a watermelon that I've put in there and it's full of worms and they'll go around there and eat the live worms. They like that a lot too. But at the moment, there's no worms in there. To keep the chickens on the perimeter and not in the garden, Dale built another fence. Really, probably this fence probably took me an hour to put up. Uh, the challenge with out here, because we're in the rock, is the T-post. So driving the T-post can be very challenging. So. Uh, where you have rock, uh, I had to use a, um, a, a concrete drill bit and, and make a hole in the rock first and then hammer the T-post into the rock where we had to do that. But other than the T-post setting, it probably took less than an hour to put the fence up. No question, gardening and chickens mean some work. Is it worth it? You bet. Well, chickens are very um, meditative, number one. I come out here and I relax with them. Uh, I can enter a Zen zone of peace. I wanted this to be an area of peace and tranquility for both me, my husband, and our, our chickens. So that's where the Zen came in from. And plus it rhymes good with hen. <laughs> They're my Zen hens. 